What we're going to do now is have a brief quiz on the circulatory system. So I'll give you time to read the question and then I'll answer it or try and answer it. So the first question. Which artery carries deoxygenated blood? Well, we defined an artery as any vessel which carries blood away from the heart. The artery that carries blood away from the heart, which carries deoxygenated blood, is the artery which carries blood to the lungs to be oxygenated. So the answer to question number one is the pulmonary artery. Question two. Which vein carries oxygenated blood? Well, again, we defined a vein as any vessel which carries blood towards the heart. And the vein which carries oxygenated blood towards the heart is the pulmonary vein. That is the four pulmonary veins. So it's the pulmonary veins carrying oxygenated blood towards the heart. Question three, which vein ends in capillaries? This is an interesting question because veins normally end in the atria, don't they? The pulmonary veins end in the uh, left atria, the inferior and superior vena cava end in the right atria. But this question says which vein ends in capillaries, very small blood vessels? Well, the answer is actually the hepatic portal vein, carrying blood from the gut to the liver to be processed in the cells of the liver it must divide down into very small blood vessels. So unusually, the hepatic portal vein ends in capillaries. Question four. The chamber of the heart discharging blood into the systemic circulation. Well, the systemic circulation is derived from the aorta, the blood vessel which breaks down into all the other arteries that supply the body with blood. We call that the systemic circulation. And the aorta derives from the left ventricle. So it is the left ventricle that discharges blood into the systemic circulation. Question five. The chamber of the heart that discharges blood into the pulmonary circulation, that is, which chamber of the heart pumps blood to the lungs? Well, we know from the diagrams that we've looked at that it's the right ventricle which discharges blood into the pulmonary arterial system and onto the lungs. Question six. Which chamber of the heart receives blood from the systemic circulation? Well, the systemic circulation is a circulation around the body. So the chamber of the heart which receives blood from the systemic circulation is the chamber that receives blood from the inferior and superior vena cava. The chamber of the heart which receives blood from the inferior and superior vena cava is the right atria. In which vessel is the blood pressure highest? Well, the left side of the heart is thicker, has more myocardial muscle than the right side of the heart. The reason being that the left-hand side of the heart must pump blood all round about the body, whereas the right-hand side of the heart only has to pump blood round about the lungs. Therefore, you need a higher pressure to pump blood all the way around the body as opposed to merely pumping blood to the lungs. So the vessel in which the blood pressure is highest is therefore the aorta. Question eight. Following on really from question seven, as we've said, the ventricle which is most powerful is that which perfuses the, the systemic circulation. Therefore, the answer to question eight is the left ventricle. Question nine. Well, if one ventricle discharged more blood than another ventricle, that means that one of the circulatory systems, that is the pulmonary or the systemic circulation, 
would be fuller up with blood than the other one. So that can't be the case. So this question is actually a non-valid question. The answer is that they both discharge the same amount of blood over a given period of time. Question 10. Which blood vessel carries least urea? Carries least urea. Well, urea is produced in the liver and excreted via the kidneys. So that means that the blood vessel which leaves the kidneys will have slightly less urea in it than the other blood vessels because some of the urea has been excreted in the urine. The vessel which drains the kidney is the renal vein, the right and left renal vein, one draining each kidney. So the vessel carrying least urea is the renal vein. Question 11, which blood vessel carries most urea? Well, urea is actually produced in the liver. It's a way of getting rid of toxic nitrogen waste products from metabolism. So the blood vessel which carries most urea is the blood vessel that drains the organ which produces the urea in the first place. Because it's the liver that produces the urea, that means it is the hepatic vein which carries slightly more urea than the other blood vessels. Question 12. Which blood vessel carries most glucose immediately following a meal? Well, the carbohydrate component from the meal will be, absor be uh, absorbed as simple sugars such as glucose. So the blood vessel which is draining the gut, you might remember, is the hepatic portal vein. So it would be the hepatic portal vein that carries the most glucose immediately following a meal. It would also be carrying the most of all the other products of digestion from the meal which had been ingested. Number 13, which blood vessel carries most glucose during a period of fasting? Well, glucose is stored in the liver as glycogen. When the blood sugar levels drop, glucagon is released from the alpha cells in the islets of Langerhan in the pancreas and converts the stored glycogen, which is insoluble, to soluble glucose, which can then be used to increase blood sugar levels and therefore increased in the metabolic processes of cells. So the vessel which carries most glucose during a period of fasting is the vessel which drains the organ which stores the glucose. It is the liver that stores the glucose as glycogen. Therefore, the vessel carrying most glucose during a period of fasting must therefore be the hepatic vein. And the last question, which blood vessel carries most lactate during a period of running? Well, during vigorous exercise, there can be some anaerobic metabolism in the muscles. That will cause the generation of some lactic acid. And this will be drained from the anaerobically metabolizing muscle in whatever vein is draining that muscle. And the example we used as of the blood vessel draining the legs was the femoral vein. So the femoral vein will carry most lactic acid during a period of running.